Uh-oh. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. <laughs> Welcome to the first episode of Monday Minor Week Memories. Now, you're going to ask me what is Monday Minor Week Memories. Well, this is kind of a segue off of my sharing collection videos. And I will link sharing collection videos at the end of this video. And what this is, is me showcasing some of the autographed minor league sets that I have in my collection. A lot of people have said, hey, why don't you ever share some of your in-person autographs? Well, I'm doing just that now. With what's going on, I don't foresee a in-person minor league season coming up for me. So I thought I'd kind of create a journal or a diary of some of the minor league sets that I've collected in the past and I'm going to showcase them and kind of show off some of the jewels of my collection. The first set for the first episode we're going to feature the 2000 Midwest League Prospect set and I mentioned this set in a previous video when I did my top five minor league in person autographs so let me just break right into this set and I'm going to showcase it with you guys. Okay, so this first set is called the Midwest League 2000 Midwest League set, and this is the checklist. And as you can see, the names on the checklist, there are some pretty big, significant names, and we're going to show those cards to you here in a second. I'm just going to lay them out on the camera, and you guys can see them for yourself. Um, this video series, I'm going to talk about the card sets. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the players, and I might even share a little info about how I got the card signed. I, you know, I have some. Um, fond memories so I'm not gonna make these videos too long but let me just get right down to business so all right the first one is former first round pick of the Brewers JM Gold and I actually got that one through the mail uh, the second one is Jeff Robinson all right and this is Jason Stum he was a top prospect in the White Sox organization. I believe one of their first round picks. This is Brian West, uh, who actually, after his minor league playing career, went on to play college football, if I'm not mistaken. This is former World Series hero for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, the St. Louis Cardinals, the Chicago Cubs, John Lackey as a minor leaguer. Very young man there. This is Cordell Lindsay. Simone Peters, who was in the Reds organization. And this guy was huge. I remember, let me just look on the back of his card. Six foot seven. Six foot seven, 225. He was a tall dude. I remember that. This is Travis Thompson. Clinton Lumber Kings. Here's another big, big hitter. Adam Dunn of the Cincinnati Reds is a minor leaguer. I actually got this one signed in person by him. This at the time, and that one's kind of hard to see because he signed it in the darkest possible card or spot on the card, is Ty Howington. And he was a first round draft pick of the Reds. Very hot prospect. Uh, I believe he was selected ahead of Adam Dunn, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this was the Padres' first round pick, Vince Fasson, who played in Fort Wayne. With this guy, Jake Peavy. And if you guys remember Jake Peavy, he, he was an all-star pitcher for many years with the Padres. This guy was the first round pick, Chip Ambrose, of the uh, Florida Marlins one year. I don't think he ever made a major league debut, or it, maybe he got up with the Red Sox. I don't quite remember. Now, this was the biggest card of the set at the time. This was the name. This was the can't miss. This was the prospect that everybody was chasing after. Josh Beckett. I got this Josh Beckett, along with the Chip Ambrose I just showed you, signed at the King County Cougars Stadium. The year that he was with the Cougars. So that was the big, big prospect at the time. Here's a couple more. These weren't 
guys that were big prospects, but they were out of the Cubs organization. James DeShane, Ryan Grip. I got those signed in person, I remember. I got Gavin Wright. He was with the Astros system. He actually signed a bunch of these for me. I had some, uh, I actually had like 10 count lots of some of these players. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to get 10 count lots of the big name players. Or maybe there were five count lots. Yeah, five count lots. So I got like five of those signed, I remember. Um, this one is John Buck. He was up in the majors for quite a while, actually. I want to say with the Astros, the Royals, uh, etc. And now for the big man. The biggest name and why I'm showing you this set. Jose. Albert Pujols signed card. I got this signed in person. This is the only card in my collection that I have signed by him that I got uh, in person from him. And this is one of the gems of my collection right here. I've been offered hundreds of dollars for this card and I've turned it down before. And I'm like, you know, Maybe if I get to the point where I'm desperate and I need some money for right now, this Jose Albert Pujols, that's the whole reason I'm showing you this set, is that card right there. This was his teammate at the time, and I talk about those five count lots. I actually had a five count lot of Nick Stocks, and he signed them all for me, but I didn't have a five count lot of Albert Pujols cards. Could you imagine if I got a five count lot of these signed by Albert Pujols? I mean, that, that'd be crazy. Then I might let a few go for a couple hundred dollars. Um, this is another guy that was a big prospect that never made it for the Twins, B.J. Garb. Uh, I want to say that he went on to play some college baseball as well after his career ended in baseball. And this was their other draft pick from the year before, Ryan Mills, who uh, I believe his father was a pitcher in the major leagues, but he was a number uh, first-round pick. Uh, this guy was the first round pick of the Arizona Diamondbacks, Corey Myers. This guy, on the other hand, was the major leaguer that had a very long, you know, pretty decent career in the majors, Lyle Overbay. He stuck around for some time. Uh, Neil Jenkins, I don't really know a whole lot about him. I want to say I got this signed through the mail many, many years ago. Uh, this one, really not the best. This is probably the worst one because it's signed in pen. And that's Ramon Santiago. Uh, Santiago was up with the Tigers organization for a little while. And maybe he played for somebody else. I don't quite remember, but he was a major leaguer. And this one's kind of rare. And again, this is that really dark and hard to see. But Cha Sing Bach for the Mariners organization. I'm not really sure if he ever made it up. And again, the autograph is there. It's just really, really dark. But if he did make it up, he wasn't there all that long. And I think I got that in person. And I also got this guy in person. And I remember getting these in a five count lot as well because I sent some in the mail. And this is Chris Snelling. And he was from the land down under. And he was an Australian player that um, you didn't hear a whole lot about Australian players. But at the time, he was an up and coming prospect in the Mariners organization. He eventually did get to the major leagues. And one cool thing, and it's kind of hard to see on this card. It's not as prominent as it is. But he actually is such a huge Star Wars fan. And I've read this online about him that he actually inscribes his cards, or he did, Yoda. So you can see right there, it says Y-O-D-A. Because he was such a Star Wars fan that he would inscribe Yoda on his cards when he signed autographs or at least he used to so in closing guys i hope you enjoyed the first uh, episode of minor league memories you know we have the josh beckett here and of course the albert Pujols. i certainly hope that you uh take the time to check out that video i'll post it at the end of this and uh up here in the corner maybe for you to check out my top five in-person minor league autographs Thanks for taking the time to watch this new series on my channel. I look forward to your comments below. Thanks.